Seeing as New York Times v. USA is a case that deals with freedom of the press, we thought the best way to explain this to you would be through the press. The First Amendment reads, Congress shall make no law respecting an establishment of religion, or prohibiting the free exercise thereof, or abridging the freedom of speech, or of the press, or the right of the people peaceably to assemble and to petition the government for a redress of grievances. In other terms, this amendment guarantees freedom of religion, speech, the press, and freedom to assemble and petition the government. Fast forward to 1971 and the U.S. is in the midst of the Vietnam War. The Department of Defense conducted a secret study on the United States activities in Vietnam. The New York Times published a series of articles about the origins of the Vietnam War from this study which was leaked by the Times former Defense Department analyst Daniel Ellsberg. This great looking guy is Daniel Ellsberg. This series of articles was then called the Pentagon Papers. <laughs> On June 15, 1971, the government sought an injunction, which prohibits certain information from being communicated against the Times. They argued that the publication of these papers could prolong the war and hurt the efforts of returning the U.S. prisoners currently being kept in Vietnam. The Times claimed the government was engaging in censorship of the press, which violated the First Amendment. A permanent injunction was never established against the Times. This case was rushed to the courts because of the unique national importance of the issue and the widespread national public attention that the case was receiving. Less than two weeks after the Times published the first article, the Supreme Court was hearing the case, and a few days later, on June 30, 1971, a decision was issued. The ruling was similar to that in the previous case of Near versus Minnesota. Prior restraints were only applicable in certain cases, and this was not one of them. The court ruled 6-3 in favor of the Times. The judges were all split on their reasoning. Some judges said any restraints on publication are a violation of the First Amendment, while others said they needed more time to evaluate on how the publication would impact national security. While reading the verdict, it was stated that this carries a heavy burden of showing justification for the imposition of such a restraint. Yet in this case, the government had failed to meet that burden. The three judges who voted in favor of the U.S. stated that the government should be allowed to impose a restraint in the extraordinary circumstances in which the publication could endanger U.S. soldiers. The New York Times never did publish the portions of the Pentagon paper that the government claimed were the most sensitive. In addition, further publication of the Pentagon papers by newspapers around the country did not attract a great deal of attention or significantly affect the United States policy or opinions on Vietnam. So, these old, now dead guys made an amendment that you could say whatever the heck you wanted in the papers, which led to some lovely stories. But these mean people in Washington said, no way, you say what we want you to. So the New York Times said, screw you to the people in Washington and published all our country's war secrets in Vietnam. Now, the government did the American thing and brought them to court. This case was rushed through the courts because, you know, here in America, we play favorites. The court said, and I quote, the American government is stupid. We were guaranteed freedom of the press. Therefore, we will have freedom of the press. And now today, America has freedom of the press. Well, kinda. See, the court wouldn't set definite terms in this ruling. Therefore, you always have a chance of being brought to court for what you say in a newspaper. Thank you, America.